Welcome back to the Friday vlog series. Where today? We've got a problem with the Elf's Falleth Aero frame and I kind of think it's a good problem to have. Some of you will disagree, no doubt, but you can decide at the end of this video once I've presented everything to you. But if you've just landed on this channel or this series, you might be wondering, what the bloody hell is an Elves? Now out of the box, according to experts. Was that the color that it arrived with? What about the quality? Well, my profession, like my professional opinion. No. I don't right. know. You've what's got the, no idea. What's the right answer? Are you into forks? I love a good fork. <laughs> I don't have any idea. That's what Sandy says. It's almost too nice, you know, for um, a mass produced type thing. The gloss area is very nice paint job. And then it's got the nice little fade from gloss to matte, which, well, yeah, it takes a little bit of thinking about and all that. But I, that's why I said, did they know this was for you? Because it, it, it looks good. So, and then you look at this one. Yeah, very, very clean in yeah. here. Yeah. A beautiful surface there for the bearings to seat in top and bottom. It's nice and clean in the frame. Very clean bottom bracket area. But if you want to be fully brought up to speed, you can watch this video over there, which had over 200,000 views in the first week. And you could say the cat is now out of the bag. And as a result of that, Peter, who runs the local distribution for Elves Frames, reached out to me and said, can we have a chat? I said, yes. And then during the discussion, he threw me a curveball. I said, can we record part of the discussion? He said, no worries, which is what I'm gonna share with you right now. Now the fella, the frame that I purchased is being upgraded as we speak. Why is that? We're going for UCI approval for the both the Falif and the Vanya, which I think just more of the European uh, riders just use that as a nice affirmation that it's actually a good quality frame because there's actually a cost associated with getting the UCI approvals. The frames have to meet certain standards. I just think it brings a really good uh, quality assurance to the brand. And where are you at from a Falif perspective in the UCI approval process? Now being UCI approved, as a recreational and amateur road cyclist who does a little bit of racing from time to time, does it really matter? Do I need a frame to be UCI approved external to peace of mind? To answer this question, I reached out to the ex-president of one of the biggest cycling clubs in Australia, Caulfield Carnegie Cycling Club, to pose this question to him. So look, during my time as president, and when we were governed by Cycling Australia, and then we switched over to Oz Cycling, there was never a directive to the club to scrutinize bikes for UCI regulations. Well, the other thing that clubs want to achieve is a level of inclusiveness and accessibility. So to achieve that, the sport needs to be affordable. So if you could only race a UCI approved bike and other equipment, it may make the sport unaffordable for a lot of people, especially the juniors. And even those that are just getting into cycling that maybe don't want to invest the money that's required to buy that spec of bike, but want to get out there and start riding. So with the UCI regs, they really, in, on frames in particular, really only came into play January of 2011. So does that mean that bike behind you is not UCI approved? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love it. Steel is real cam, as you know. <laughs> so being a non-UCI frame, it doesn't really matter for my local riding, bunch riding, even a little bit of local club racing, external to, of course, peace of mind. But as a YouTuber, does it matter? Let's quickly hear back from Peter first in terms of timeframes. We've submitted all of the doc documentation so it's passed all its tests. So now we're sort of hopefully in a, in a paperwork process. So we're expecting that approval uh, it can take a long time, may even take up to three months to actually get the approval. But we know what standards we need to meet to actually get those approvals before we even submit the paperwork. So we've, we're ready to go. Okay, that's good. So this, this frame that you've created that will most likely be approved now, is it possible that I can gain access to it in the short term? So as a YouTuber, you should appreciate why I'm asking that question. Let me paint a little picture for you here. I build this bike up. I do my first impressions. I ride it for a long period of time. I spend hours on content creation, emotional time and energy. We get to the long-term review and then... Boring! There's a new frame on the market and your content is less 
relevant. That is why I asked Peter if I could get my hands on a prototype. I might be able to get you a, pro a prototype to test with. I should probably be able to get that to you within a month. To, to be honest, uh, the frame has had all its on-road testing, so they've done all their you know, factory testing has done on-road testing by their local riders. One of the small holding back points is we've, we've got to build a new aero bar to fit it. So it's got a slightly different integration at the front. So we're just building the new um, aero bar. Probably won't be able to get you the new aero bar for you to test, but you will be able to use the old one. It just won't look as pretty as the new one will be. So ultimately, I feel this is a good problem to have. Yes, we're gonna have to wait a little bit longer for the build, for the first impressions, for the long-term review, but we're talking weeks, not months. And as a result, I feel this series is gonna be a whole lot better for it, albeit it is unplanned. Let me know your thoughts below and while you're down there, if you could give the video a like, helps the channel out, I would greatly appreciate it. And while I had Peter, I thought I'd ask him a few questions about elves, why he's invested his emotional time and energy into it and a little bit about their history because the more I now investigate into this brand, which I knew nothing about before this series started, I'm becoming quite intrigued myself. I bring elves into Australia, so I'm the local distributor for the brand. Why elves? There's like a thousand different Chinese frames you can bring in. Why did you decide to partner with elves? One of the things I saw is that frame prices are just getting outrageously expensive. If you try and buy a frame locally, as you know, from a known brand, they're really expensive. So I was looking for different options to actually make them a bit more economical. I found the elves guys, and what I really like about them is that they've actually got their own factory and manufacturing process. So it's actually their factory that actually produces the frame. They do also do uh, frames for other brands as well. Research and development's all out of Taiwan, um, but the manufacturing is out of China. Is it often the case where the Chinese bike brand isn't manufacturing their own bike? They don't own the manufacturing process? Yeah, a lot of frames utilize open source molds, whereas elves actually produce their molds for themselves. So how long have they been around for? What's their history? So the history is basically the factory was set up in about 2006. And then they, so they were producing frames for um, OEM brands overseas. So they did that for about 10 years. And then in 2016, they launched the Elves brand. And then I've been bringing them into Australia since 2019.